Hi and welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to be doing something really important, which is authentication. Now, the first thing to do is to install a required library, which is Flask JWT. So let's go over to the terminal and just do pip install Flask JWT. Make sure that you are in your virtual environment for this, so the library gets installed in the right place. I've already got it installed, so nothing really happens. But for you, it'll install the library and get it, make it available for you. So what is Flask JWT? And well, really, what is JWT? JWT is, stands for JSON Web Token. And essentially, all that it is, is an obfuscation of data. And that is, we're going to be encoding some data, and that's a JSON Web Token. For example, if I want to send you a private message that says hello, and I don't want anybody else to be able to see it, I can encode that message so that nobody else can understand it unless they have a particular um, decryption key, so a way to decrypt it. We are going to be doing that, but with user IDs. So a user is going to be an entity that has a unique identifying number and a username and a password. The user is going to send us a username and a password, and we are going to send them, the client really, a JWT, and that JWT is going to be the user ID. When the client has the JWT, they can send it to us with any request they make, and when they do that, it's going to tell us that they have previously authenticated. And that means they are logged in. It sounds all a bit abstract, so let's get right into it. Just at the beginning, I mentioned that in order to encrypt and be able to then understand what was encrypted, you need some sort of key. And we do have that in Flask. All we have to do is down here, below app or somewhere around there, type app.secret key and then type in a secret key. This key should be secret. So, for example, if you were going to publish this code, you would not want the secret key to be visible. I'm going to just put Jose in there. It doesn't matter what it is at this point, but do know that if this was being used by people and this was a production API, this would have to be secret and it would have to be secure, so something long and complicated. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of functions. I'm going to go into another file for that. So I'm just going to create a new file there and call it security.py. This security.py file is going to contain a few important functions. The first thing it's going to have is it's going to have an in-memory table of our registered users. So it's going to be something like users is going to be a table with right now a single user that has id1 username um, bob and password asdf okay that's our users table just pretend this is some sort of database then we're going to have a username mapping and all this is going to be is the following bob is going to be this dictionary here. Okay, and then we're going to have a user ID mapping, which is going to be that one is going to be this dictionary here. Okay, so all that we've done is we've created a table of users, and then we've said, now I want to be able to have an index on Bob. So we've created another dictionary that has the following. A key, which is Bob, the username, and then the values of the dictionary in it. And then another instance, which has the ID as the key and the values there of the dictionary as the body. If we had many users, then this would grow accordingly. And what would happen then is that we would be able to say something like username mapping Bob, and that would give us 
user, the Bob's user, really. Or user, uh, user ID mapping, and that would give us Bob's the user. So why do we do this? So we don't have to iterate over our list every time. Essentially, we have this mapping here, which lets us immediately find the user that we're looking for just by knowing its username, or immediately find the user that we're looking for just by knowing its user ID. Okay. Perfect. Now that we've got that, we're going to create our two functions. One function is going to be used to authenticate a user. It's the function that, given a username and a password, is going to select the correct username from our list. Right now there's only one, but there could be many. This is the authenticate function, and it takes in a username and a password, and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to find a user by username. Username mapping dot get username. Dot get is another way of accessing a dictionary. Um, so all we do is put the key in there, and the dot get method gives us the value of the key. The added benefit, which you don't get if you use the square bracket notation, is that you can also set a default value, which we're going to do just now. We're going to set the default value to none. What that means is that if there isn't a username key for this username, if there isn't a user with this username in the mapping, we're going to return none. Okay? And then we can say if user is not none, but we can delete that because it's implied, and user.password equals password, we're going to return the user. Okay? And then the identity function, which is unique to Flask JWT, the extension that we've installed. The identity function takes in a payload, and the payload is the contents of the JWT token. And then we're going to extract the user ID from that payload. And once we have the user ID, we can retrieve the specific user that matches this payload by just doing return user ID mapping dot get user id or none as a default see how these mappings now start to make a bit more sense because we can directly retrieve users by user id or username without having to do any iteration now that this is here i would like to extend this slightly before we move on and i'm still going to do this as part of this video and that's by creating a new file that is going to be user.py. In the user.py file, we're going to create a user object. So that instead of having good old dictionaries, we have proper objects. So let's go into our user.py file and create the user uh, init self underscore id username password. And all this is going to do is it's going to be a store of data. So now when we create a user object, that's going to be essentially the same thing as the dictionary. Okay. Um, do notice I'm using underscore ID instead of a good old ID, because ID is a Python keyword, and we don't want to use that as a variable name. Self.id is fine, though. Okay. So now we know that we've got the user here. We can import it, because the user file is in the same directory as the security file in which we are in, we can just do from user import user. That accesses the user file and imports the user class from it. And then our users list, instead of being dictionaries, can now be things like that. And our mappings can be improved substantially instead of having essentially a copy paste of the same thing over and over again we're going to do something like this. U the username, u for you in users. And this is a set comprehension, but instead of assigning values, u for you in users, we're assigning key value pairs. So u the username is u, and for the first user, that's going to be Bob is this object, 
if there was more users, then the next user, Rolf, would be this other object, and so on and so on. And the user ID mapping is going to be the same, but u.id is u for you and users. Okay. That does make things a lot more concise. Okay, hopefully that does make a lot of sense. And if it doesn't, please do ask a question in the course Q&A. More than happy to help out with that. Also, for some people who are using Python 2.7, it's usually a good idea to not compare strings directly with equal equal, because in different systems and different Python versions, things may get a bit more complicated, especially when you bring in the subject of um, string encoding. I don't know if you've heard about these things, but ASCII, Unicode, things like that. But fortunately, Flask comes with the nice library called Worksoig. At least I think I'm pronouncing that right. And that has a very nice safe strcmp, safe string compare. So we can import safe string compare from worksoig.security. And all that really does is it compares strings. So and if we call it in this way, um, properly, and now we've got save string compare, which basically returns true if the strings are the same, but it works on like old Python versions and all different systems, servers and things like that. So it's just a bit safer way of comparing strings and all different encodings as well. Okay, so now that we've got this here, we are going to be able to use the authenticate and the identity functions to essentially log in users and then be able to identify them. At the end of this video, which is now, this doesn't make a lot of sense. I do appreciate that. But please bear with me until the next video where we're going to bring everything together by finalizing the app.py. I'll see you there.